first. Mm -hmm. Holy shit, shit. Those are freaking big ass footprints. That is so weird. I don't know if that's, this is what I did, is I stepped right here. Cause look at this one. Look at that one. There's another one right there. Look at how and small there's another one but look. right there. One, two, three, four, five. Look at the uniformity of the foot all the way up. I mean, this stuff, like, there's been deer running through the tree lines all day. Oh, like, really? all the time. Well, I mean, off, I've probably seen six deer today running through the trees. I wouldn't say this is the least I've seen, but this is uh, less than average. Usually there's groups of, like, five or six that you'll see walk through. The right. So what do you guys think is going to happen tonight after last 50, night? 50 there's, some, there's anybody's guess. No amount of experience could tell you anything or help you. Right. Uh, maybe a good instinct or something. Right. It'd probably be better off going with that. I, I don't know. Woo! We're getting coyotes answering. It's kind of cool. <laughs> it's funny because I've been joking about people doing that, but we start doing it and crazy stuff starts happening. <laughs> I don't know. You doing it again? No, and he was doing a standing up tree, which might matter in the sound yeah, itself. I'm sure everybody's going to want to know, like, exactly what happened, uh, not last night, but the night before last. So I just thought I'd walk you guys through it so you guys could see everything where it was. Um, I was sitting right here at camp by the campfire. That's my chair. That's where I was sitting. Uh, Ro was sleeping in his tent right there with his camera. I didn't even know that you had a camera in there, dude. How crazy is that? It was just like the only shot I had at finding a camera was right. you being right there. I sleep with my camera in my hand. Right. Just for that reason, somebody says, let's go. And out of the whole time since we pulled up here, when that happened, that was probably, like, there had only been maybe 30 minutes from when I put my camera in the car right. to charge the batteries, because both batteries were completely dead. Like, of the whole time we've been here, that's the only time I haven't been 100% ready. But it was oh, like, wait, it was like 4 o'clock in the morning, so nothing had happened yet, you know. Anyway, I was sitting right here, so I decided I was going to go to bed. But I hadn't said anything yet. We we're just kind of wrapping up the conversation, and then all of a sudden, like straight back behind me, I hear crash, crash, crash. Like it sounded like Jurassic Park or something like coming up through the trees, and the sound was coming from right through these trees here. This is where the road goes back. There's the big meadow, and then straight back around the corner. I'll show you in a minute um, where that goes, but. The crunching, the big, huge footsteps clearly coming through on two legs, standing upright. What come, comes out of the tree line in the dark. It was huge, and you could tell just by the sound. And it came out 
of the tree line and stopped walking halfway between the back of the cars and the trees, like right there in the open. So I like stand up from my chair and I'm standing right here and I have my flashlight out with my finger, my middle finger on the button to turn it on. And the thought crosses my mind right in that instant that if I, if I turn the light on, one of two things is gonna happen. This all processed in my brain in probably two seconds. If I turn my light on, this thing is either one, gonna rush forward and kill us, kill us all, or two, it's gonna turn and run and we're not gonna have any evidence or any proof. Either, either situation is bad. I might see the thing and like have perfect confirmation for myself what they look like and my own experience of actually seeing one, but nobody's gonna believe me anyways. And so I, I'm gonna lose the shot and that's what I'm here to do is to get the shot and come back with the proof and the evidence. So I'm like, I gotta get my camera, I gotta get my camera. And he's telling me, he's like, turn the light on, turn the light on. Cause he was ready to bolt. Like we were, cause we didn't know if it was gonna keep coming up on us or not. And from the size of it, I, <laughs> I we did not want it to get any closer. So um, I said, I gotta get my camera, I gotta get my camera. And he says, well, where's your, he goes, where's your camera? And then it dawns on me that, I said, it's in my car. And there's this long, like 10 seconds of just, oh crap, just silence. Cause that's the car that I'm driving right there. And this thing was standing like maybe 15 feet off the trunk of the car. So in order for me to get my camera, I was gonna have to go up right there where, I mean, that thing could just reach out and grab me. So I don't know what I was thinking, but after a few seconds of processing it, I just like decided I had to have a camera. I actually took like probably three steps towards my car and he started freaking out telling me to stop, 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 stop. Cause I was gonna go get my camera like a total idiot. Um, and then it, I realized that Ro was right here and he might have a camera and we needed to wake him up and get him involved. And so I immediately came over at that point and was fumbling around and I knelt, knelt down. I was trying to find a zipper so I couldn't see over the tent what was going on here. And that's when, that's when he um, saw it, like the silhouette of it um, standing there. Like, I don't know if it stepped forward or what, but I was kneeling down in front of the tent. And as soon as I started unzipping the tent and I found the zipper, um, you could hear it turn around. I don't know if it was the noise of the tent or that if, the fact that I disappeared and it didn't know where I went that spooked it. But it, all of a sudden I could hear it turn around and go, Grunch, grunch, and it started going back the same way it came out. So I reach in on poor Roe and basically grab him by the front of his sleeping bag and like yank him up to the sitting position. I'm like, they're here, there's two of them, there's blah, 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 blah. And I'm like freaking out. And the look on your face was awesome, dude. You were like total shock. <laughs> oh, I forgot to mention that right after this thing came out of the trees, about right up there, we heard another crunch, snap like right up here. And we both out loud were like, there's two of them, there's another one right there, there's another one right there. So there was one here and one up here, two separate ones all moving in on us. And so Ro grabs his camera equipment. You have a wasp on your head, back of your head, by the way. I'm gonna get it off. Yeah, please, I'm allergic to sting. Oh, thank you. Got it. That's gonna be awesome for the video, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> It's, so Ro stands up, but he doesn't have his shoes or socks on or anything. And around here, that's like bad idea. Unless you're a Bigfoot, apparently. But he sits up as soon as he gets his light set and he hits record. He stands up and as soon as, like, he hits record on his camera. And we literally just, like, because we knew he couldn't chase it and it was walking away. He was barefoot. We reach over and we just, like, grab the camera out of his hands. And at that point, I blaze my, my flashlight and all you can see is this blackness in the trees because it was already into the tree line. So we take off. I come around this way with the flashlight and we start running and I'm pointing my flashlight and I don't know what we're thinking. We just have to get the shot. So we start running after it and we get over here to the road so we don't have any debris and we're running side by side. I'm like in this track and he's right over here next to me like just in this area and we're running down this road lights going in the trees lights scanning scanning and then I keep looking up here where 
where this other one was. And as soon as we get to this point uh, where we're crossing the tree line. So if you notice the distance from right here, this angle, it gives you an idea. This big one that walked up through the trees here, it came clear out in the open, like clear up right about there. It was standing right out in the open in between the trees. That's how much space there is, maybe 50 yards, 40, 50 yards. And it's standing right there in the open. And we're up at camp probably 30 yards away from it. It was like right up there by behind our cars. And then it turned around, bruh, 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 came back through this way. So we're running after it and we can hear it this whole time. We can hear it and I'm shining in there, nothing. It's just like shadows, nothing at all. Can't see anything. And you hear crash, crash, crunch. And it's going through the trees, going through the trees. And we come up here where the tree line presses up against the road. And we get right about here. I mean, it was pitch black other than the flashlights. You couldn't see anything. And these woods at night are just like super spooky. And we get to right, like right here where this tree is. And it sinks in that the, the thought crosses my mind that, that we're going to get flanked by this other one. And I thought, this is a decoy. This one's pull, sucking us in and we just fell for a trap. That's literally like what I was thinking. We just walked into a trap and they've got us. They've split us up from the camp, removed us from our safety, and now we're over here in their kingdom, in their world. I mean, this whole place is their world, but you know what I'm saying? Like they got us away from our element and running. And I thought that the other one was gonna come up and flank us. And at that point I stopped and uh, I grabbed him. He was holding Rose's camera and I was just running, all I had was a flashlight. Um, and I grabbed him by the shoulder and we stopped. And I said, this, I was like, I said, we gotta stop. I said, we, we can't do this, this is crazy. We need to get the bear spray. We're like literally right there crashing this whole time. Crunch, crunch, you can hear it like running away. And so we decided to keep going. And um, we just sucked it up and went. So we come running up around this corner and when you get right here at night I'm telling you it's, it's terrifying even when you're not hearing things running through the woods you come up here and the trees are right on the road and anything you know like you get the sense that anything could be right there in the dark and you wouldn't, wouldn't even see it um, so thick but we run right past here I'm like brushing along the trees um, totally vulnerable totally open to being flanked no cover, nothing like, just fully exposed. And all these trees, all this cover. And we get up here and we hear all of a sudden that moment of hesitation that I took gave it a lot of extra distance. Then we start hearing it um, going over through these trees right here and over this hill right into all those big trees in that area, in that direction. And we run up to here and we can tell that it's quite a ways away from us. like. It's doubled the distance between us now. And we come up here to this dry creek and um, we realize, it dawns on us, that right over there is where the shooting happened, where the, the adult and the juvenile uh, Bigfoot were shot and killed. And we realized that it, it went straight back into the, in that same area. And so we stopped like right here at the creek bed and we realized that like this is like somewhere up here is their home. And it was a bad idea to go up in there. And then, so we stopped and it had distance, put so much distance in between us at that point that there, like it could just go up in the hills and there's, there we realized there was no way we were gonna catch it at that point. And I don't know if on Rose's camera, if you can hear any steps or even see anything, um, that's what happened. So we hurried back up to camp. We kept looking for the other one up in the hills. Nothing. This was the one that was the one that was up here. Never ever made another sound. So I'll walk all the way back up. So we come all the way back up. We got to come all the way back through this area in the dark, um, just with our flashlights. And we decide we got to wake everybody up because we don't know if it's going to come back or it's all happening like right now. And so I'll walk you all the way up here and show you. 
we come back to camp, come around the campfire, and I'll uh, turn the camera off here and hike up, but right up there to the trees and right, going up through the trees right there, we find the first footprints. Okay, so I'm up here where we picked up the first tracks. Um, this would be about two hours later. We sat down in the camp and we waited for the, waited for the sun to come up. So it was between five and 5.30, um, maybe six o'clock, I don't know. Uh, this is all going on, you know, we're all kind of freaking out and excited about what's going on. So there's camp and the campfire. That's where the thing came out of the trees. So we're all walking around trying to figure out if we can find any tracks, any footprints or what happened. You know, we looked over there, all over in that area, didn't find any big ones. That whole thing, uh, you could see where something crossed the road, but it was so, um, there, I mean, there was nothing definable about it. You could just see where something crossed the road. That's it. There's like no definitive tracks or footprints or anything. But anyway, um, right here on this hillside, on this slope, um, up from camp, we notice we pick up like a couple of uh, what looked like footprints of something walking on two legs. Uh, nothing like a big obvious footprint, but you could tell that something walking on two feet basically came right through here, went right up through this clearing, and straight up here. So we're staying off to the side, and you can see going up this area, I don't even know if you can see if there's any tracks here. There might even, there might even still be here. But we've been walking up and down here from casting, so I don't know if you see any or not. We might see some when I start walking around to show you. But anyways, the tracks come right up the middle here, and they're like big strides, like far, well, I could stretch my legs that far, but not easily. If I'm going uphill, there's no way I would stretch that far. So it was a wide stretch between the footsteps coming up this little hill. And then it stepped over. That might even be a footprint right there. Hard to tell. See, there's so much debris. That could be easily be a footprint. It could be one of ours at this point. I don't know. But it stepped over this. And then we got our first big track that we've already cast now and removed first big obvious track right there uh, you can see the remnants of the cast that we made so boom right there it's about uh, 15 and a half inches long and six and three quarter inches wide and that's all from the, the inside of where the dirt is pushed out like from here and like there the actual bare foot itself, uh, bare footprint itself, not bare the animal, but like bare with no shoe. Compared to my foot, that's huge. I wear a size 12. Next footprint is right there. We cast that one too, and the next one's there. So you can see the stride is not very far. Um, maybe 16 inch stride, and then that one's a little farther, maybe two foot stride. But every step was consistent. This one was by far the best, most obvious track. These were like kind of partial. This one had, was like kind of weird, like the toes didn't get picked up. It was just like a heel. And then that one, you could see the foot, but then you could tell that the toes like slid down like at an angle. And that track didn't, when we cast it, it didn't turn out very well at all. So it was moving through here, obviously walking on two feet. Um, going through here. This footprint, I've already filmed it a little bit, uh, we can, so we can look at that. I think Rose still got it. So let me pick up the track, and it basically goes through the trees, through here. We all have been walking through here looking for more so many times. I don't want to say what's the track and what's not. I'm not experienced in that. But it basically moved, you could see where it was stepping and leaving scuff marks. Basically moved through here and then we lost the tracks. We couldn't find anything right here. Here the whole time. 
it's got va the vantage point on us. I get every time I hear a noise, like being up here, I'm not even gonna lie, it's spooky. Even in the daytime, I hear I just like heard a chipmunk. And I was like, oh, first, <laughs> like inside, my heart jumped because it's like a reliving it, you know. But anyway, it uh, came through this area. And they were looking down here. I came up here and picked up the trail right up here again. So it had come through here. I walked through this way. Look at all these limbs. And like, how in the world did we not hear this one walking around? It's incredible. All the twigs and limbs and pine cones and everything. Like, you can hear me walking. But I think it walked, it must have walked right down through here across this deadfall log. That might even be, that actually looks like one. I don't know if you can see that. There's the heel, the heel and the toes, like right there. There's a step, there's a step. That, this is another step right here. Where it stepped there and there. And then it came through. I don't know if it came through there or went around this way. We we'll kind of lose the trail again. It keeps going. It keeps coming through this area the whole time. There's our camp right there. And this is the first time it ex really exposes itself. But it literally walks out in the open here. The footprints come along this way. All the way around the camp. Out, like wide open it's got closer cover like down there but nothing up here there's no trees in between it and us so it was able to sneak out in the open in the dark without us seeing it at all circled around the entire camp like this watching us none of the tracks none of these tracks there's so much debris and grass. You could see where it stepped, but there, it was they were uncastable. Like none of the others. Those first three were like the only three that were worth it. And then here it comes back in the open. Through this area this whole time. We're just right there. And it's circling, like observing, reconning. And then it comes back around here all the way down look at all these limbs how does it not make a noise I don't know they're like ninjas there we are don't count the whole time the footprints came all the way down here and then as they get down here right in this area this is where the one was standing that we heard the snap up higher that's where the big one came out this is where we heard the other snap of the, the step and the snap twig. Um, so we found the main footprints there. We never found footprints of the big guy or the big one. Um, and we found ones that looked like they were like uh, a kid, like a little one's footprints. So it might have been like a mother and a baby and then the big dad. And I don't know. There's no way, it's just, it's just a guess, I don't know. But we did find little footprints. Um, they were they were so faint and tiny, like you couldn't really, I mean, they were big, they were like, I don't know, like maybe five inches long. But uh, you could tell that it was like a little one. They weren't impressioned in, there was like nothing to cast, nothing that you could cast at all. And it was like kind of in the debris. But the little one's footprints were out here somewhere. I don't know. Um, we didn't bring enough plaster. I brought one 12 pound bag and that's it. And, we, and that took up the three that we cast. That took up all of it. So yeah, that's the story. That's how it happened. Hey Ro. Oh, you filming? That looks like one of the, the little ones right there.
I don't know. I think I I seriously think that that might be one of them, one of the little ones. It's uh, I'm zoomed in. My back is all messed up, so it's hard to judge. You can see the heel and the toes right here. Heel and the toes. You can see little toe toe prints. It's not like a shoe. It looks there's little toe prints. It's I probably really hard to see on camera, but it's almost as big as my foot. It's probably like eight, seven or eight inch footprint right there. I don't know, but that means it was pretty close too. It was like right, we were sitting right there. It was out in the open. Um, so I don't know. Maybe the big one, the little the little one was coming down here. It's heading in this direction. Uh, maybe the little one went back there, and that's when they or met up with the big one and then they left. But it was standing probably right there, maybe behind the cars, with the big one. I don't know. I'm gonna stay right here. Talk to Ro, I think he's filming part of the documentary. Right there, but anyway, that's how it went down. And then we just gathered the uh, casting material, went up and cast the print, the, the first print, and then we waited and later we cast the other two. And that's it, that's pretty much the last that happened after the tracks and after that night. We didn't have any activity at all after that, but probably because of the flashlights and everything, I don't know, but it's quite an adventure. Wish you guys were all here. So, I don't know, what do you guys think? Does that look like one? It very possibly, it, it's in the right place. It's in the trackway. None of us at all walked up here with bare feet. No. At all, and you can see the toe. It's probably really hard on camera, but you can see the toad indentations just faintly. My back's too sketchy. If you want to put the use the uh, tape measure, I can't. I cannot squat really down like that. Get. That'll not. He's not get what I want to get. Yeah. This is that right. Yeah. That's, that's uh, right. not quite. There's like more here. Wait, right there. Let's not walk around too much. We're finding all kinds of crazy stuff now, like heel, huge toes. Look right here. Little, look, that dude, that looks like knuckles or a small foot, like a little foot. Those toes are clear though, or knuckles or whatever. Holy crap. Wow, dude. I can't believe you found them. Come on with these, Nadia. Oh man, I want to get down on my knees and look right now. Let, just look. let me know, David, where you want to go. Okay, so if that's a knuckle print, that's the toe and heel. This matches the cast, dude. 15 and a half inches. That's another one of the big ones. Yeah. So it literally, look at the angle of approach on that from where we found the tracks. And look at how, first of all, how, how close that is to camp. And second of all, the, <laughs> the direction in which this track is placed where it's headed right through here if you draw a straight line back from that there's like no cover it 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 used the little saplings right here for cover and walked through the open if it went in somewhat of a straight line either that or it curved around uh, randall's comes up here by the weekend and starts casting with justin he's gonna make justin come back oh okay good i'm gonna bet money on that that's that's a definite match that's a that's a right foot that's you can see the big toe right there and it's the same length as the ones we've cast and the ones that we cast start up clear up there and come clear around and then there's another definitive and we're out here, dude. there's more i don't know if there are ours or not but there's just more there's just more track here. it could have literally come that close right to the tree line yeah. that's only what 20 yards behind our yeah. backs Where we, I was sitting right in that blue chair, and there's, there, I'm gonna come and film those too, but came right behind these trees. That's another little foot, don't you think? What do you think, David? Is that a boot print What's your that? impression? It's really hard to tell. The, I mean, the I toes see. or the knuckles. It's either toes, knuckles. Toes, right? it, you, you definitely see it looks like a an indent down that way. Right.
Dude, we have the big one and the little one right next to each other. Either that or it's put its fingers it down like in. That's what my first impression was was knuckles like that. They might have just like when we flipped our flashlights yeah. on just knuckled down. But they would have been prepared. I mean they made all that noise right over here that so they knew you knew you Look at look at the weight. The impression right there. Yeah. I, I, how deep that is. This, let me try and that's 15, 15 and a right half, there. exact match to the other one. You have the large toe. No way. Yours don't even dig in as deep as the no, small I'm one. A, third of the, a quarter of the way down. Scoot over a little bit with the lighting. Oh, sure, sure. So you just stomped as hard as you could right there. Twice. Twice. And look how deep that one is compared. I mean, that's like impressioned in an inch and a half deep at the heel. That's a heavy footfall. So where are the other tracks you're talking about? Uh, it looks like we walked on top of it. Like there, you can see the big toe right in the middle of the frame. That big looks like an egg. It's like the size of an egg. Yeah. But it is, isn't it? Like a chicken egg. That's how big that toe is. Yeah. And the heel all the way back there. I mean, that's clear as day if you're standing right here. I think these were the ones that took the tracks. Now here's that. Looks like we walked on top of it. That's the right foot, the big toe, and the other toes go right across here. Heel. 15 and a half inches. And then you have either a juvenile or a knuckle. Knuckles. It looks to me like four knuckles. Yeah. Oh, right down in there. I know. Or it could have turned around to face us and dug its toes in. Could have. Those look so much smaller and more narrow and deep. Yeah. It seriously looks like this, like, doesn't it to you? Yeah. It, that was my very first instinctual impression, like just looking at it. It looks like this part of the fingers. And we don't have any more plaster. Gosh dang it. What the heck? Where's the... Uh, all through here. Like heel impressions all through here. Really? I think these what are what Justin were tracking though. Coming down through here. Right in the open. Well there was a gap. He had a gap. He would find gaps in the tracks. Uh, that's undeniable though. That right there. Undeniable. Yes. undeniable. Dude, right there. Yeah, that's, that's, I don't know, man. That could be us. Because that could we've be already us. Watched. See, here's a, here's a track that one Somebody of us have stepped already in. stepped in. See, the, we, there's a footprint of ours coming this way, but there's toes, heel, 15 inches. We've already accidentally stepped in it. 15 inches, yeah. You can see the toes. Look how close to where we camp. Right there, and this thing walked right behind us. And we didn't hear a thing. It blows me away. Until it stopped. Until, yeah, all the crashing. It probably used, came up and, and was just using these trees and watching us. Like, it was probably just spying on us, like right here, looking at us. No doubt, though, there's clearly like toes and yes. flat foot. <laughs> There's 60, 70 tracks all through here. There's more. Yeah, he doesn't give a crap about casting. It's interesting because it's a different approach than anyone has ever taken. Hmm. Man, it's, it, it, it's intense to like... To know that something was that close up behind me. Like... That's the blue chair right there. That's only maybe 20 yards, 20, 25 yards from these, where I'm standing to that, where we were sitting. They're not afraid of us at all, to let the, their children even get that close. No. Hypothetically, if it is a juvenile. It's surprising after, you know, what did occur yeah. up here. It's like somehow they knew that we weren't... Couldn't do anything. Why, you know what, that says, last night I took my my shoulder harness off because I thought it might look like a gun while I'm out here shooting. Right. Yeah. But I mean, they're, they're, it's obvious now that they came right through here and observed us from these trees probably and then walked right through there in the open. I in the back of my truck underneath, but I never took it out. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Uh, it's awesome. Interesting. Never know. Makes me want to come back soon, but I'm ready to go home right now. Yeah. <laughs>
Thanks so much for watching my entire reboot found footage, basically series from going up to the Sierra Nevada mountains to investigate that entire Bigfoot uh, location and having that experience up there where I saw this giant shadow thing come up into the trees, move through the trees, making all that noise and stepping and crossing the road. And then in the last episode, if you didn't catch that one, go watch it because I disclosed more information where we even made a promise to each other where we weren't gonna tell when we saw this orb of light flow over the camp and a bunch of other details. But now it feels good to get all of that out, to finally tell the full story, and I'm still going. Since then, I have you know, uh, gone and done a lot of other things. I've been up to Skinwalker Ranch, uh, up and around that whole region, down here into Southern Utah, all the way to the Grand Canyon, even to another location called Mount Wilson Ranch over by Area 51 that was originally researched even before Roswell, before Area 51, all the way up through the MX Missile Program, the Star Wars Program. And then Bob Bigelow was up there even before Skinwalker Ranch, doing a bunch of research, looking for what could be a buried UFO underground and metamaterials. And there's a lot of paranormal activity and things that occurs in the old Wild West Saloon, the old Settler's Cabin. And we've even filmed two whole seasons for a History Channel television show called Beyond Skinwalker Ranch. There's a bunch of stuff going on. But if you want to know more and support the research and be a part of the Crusher crew, and if you want to get featured on screen to get on screen credit as a member of the Inner Circle, please go check out my Patreon page. There's a lot of cool behind the scenes content over there where you can chat with me, you can tell us your stories and be a part of the whole group chat. And I have exclusive content that you're not gonna get anywhere else, as well as there's ways to even come out and hang out with me and do meetups if you wanna do that as well. So make sure and go check that out and we'll see you guys in the next one.